Okay, Lua scripts. Again, this is on the Creative Commons license, and this is the Mind Test modding book. All right, in Lua scripts, introduction. In this chapter, we will talk about scripting in Lua, the tools required, and go over some techniques which you will probably find useful. So tools, recommended editors, integrated programming environments, coding in Lua, selection, programming, local and global, including other Lua scripts. Tools. A text editor with code highlighting is sufficient for writing scripts in Lua. Code highlighting gives different colors to different words and characters depending on what they mean. This allows you to spot mistakes. Like function is in green, ctf in blue, dot post, open parentheses, team, comma, msg, close parentheses. Notice uh, the if not is in green, the ctf dot team parentheses team is in black, then is in green. Return false in green, end in green, if not is in green. Um, ctf dot team parentheses team dot log, then ctf dot team parentheses team dot log equals open and close brackets, end in green. Table dot insert in green ctf dot team of team dot log comma one in green comma msg close parentheses ctf dot save open close parentheses return true in green and then end for example keywords in the above snippet are highlighted such as if then and return table dot insert uh, return.table.insert is a function which comes with Lua by default. Let's see. Uh, table.insert is in green. Recommended editors. Other editors are available, of course. Windows, Notepad++, Atom. Linux, Kate, Gedit, Atom, OS X, Atom. Integrated programming environments. IDEs allow you to debug code like a native application. These are harder to set up than just a text editor. One such IDE is Eclipse with the Koneki Lua plugin. Install Eclipse plus Koneki. Create a new Lua project from existing source. Specify mind test base directory. Follow instructions from Koneki Wiki how to do attach to remote application debugging. Just a few steps. It is suggested to add those lines from Wiki at beginning to built-in.lua. Start the debugger. Set break on first line in debugger configuration to see if it is working. Start mind test. Enter the game to start up LUA. Coding in Lua. This section is a work in progress. May be unclear. Programs are a series of commands that run one after another. We call these command statements. Program flow is important. It allows you to direct or skip over statements. There are three main types of flow. Sequence, just run one statement after another, no skipping. Selected, skip over statements depending on conditions. Iteration, repeating looping. Keep running the same statements until a condition is met. So. What do statements in Lua look like? Here is local space a space equals space two. Now those two dashes is a comment. Set a to two. Okay. Local b equals two. That sets b to two. Local result equals a plus b. 
that sets result to a plus b, which is 4. a equals a plus 10. Print, parentheses, quote, sum is, space, close quotes, dot, dot, result, close parentheses. Whoa, what happened there? a, b, and result are variables. They're like what you get in mathematics. a equals w times h. The equal signs are assignments. So result is set to a plus b. Variable names can be longer than one character unlike in mathematics. As seen with the result variable, Lua is case sensitive. A is a different variable than lowercase a. Capital A is a different variable than lowercase a. The word local before they are first used means they have local scope. I'll discuss that shortly. The writer will. Variable types. Type. Integer. Description. Whole number. Uh, an integer is positive or negative. Example, local a equal, equals 4. Float, decimal. Local b equals 3.2. Local c equals 5 halves. String, a piece of text like local d equals, quote, 1, 2, 3 in words, close quote. Boolean, true or false. Like local is underscore true equals false. False is in lowercase there. Local capital E equals parentheses 1 equals equals 1 close parentheses. Most of this is standard for programming languages. Table, list, explain below. Function can run may require inputs and may return a value local result equals f-u-n-c parentheses one comma space two comma space three close parentheses not an exhaustive list doesn't contain every possible type arithmetic operators symbol a plus b that's addition like two plus two equals four a minus b is subtraction, like 2 minus 10 equals negative 8. A times b is multiplication, like 2 times 2 equals 4. A divided by b, division is 100 divided by 50 equals 2. That's an example. A with the caret b is powers. Like two, um, uppercase, uh, the, uh, like arrow up two equals two to the second, which is four. A double dot B join strings. Like quote FOO with the double dots, quote BAR, close quotes, that's put together um, as the word foobar quote, F-O-O-B-A-R, close quotes. A string in programming terms is a piece of text. Not an exhaustive list, doesn't contain every possible operator. All right, selection. The most basic selection is the if statement. It looks like this. Local random underscore number equals math.random, 1 to 100. So that's between 1 and 100. So random parentheses 1, comma, space 100, close parentheses. Math.random, parentheses 1, comma, space 100, close parentheses. That's a random number between 1 and 100. All right. If random underscore number, space greater than space 50, then print, close, open parentheses, woohoo, exclamation point in quotes, close parentheses, else, print, parentheses, quote, no, exclamation point, close quotes, close parentheses, end. So local random number equals this math.random, that's a function, I guess, if random underscore number is greater than 50, 
Uh, so the variable is random number. It checks to see if that already an integer, I guess, is greater than 50. If it is, it prints woohoo. If it's not greater than 50, then else takes over and prints no. That example generates a random number between 1 and 100. It then prints woohoo if that number is bigger than 50. Otherwise, it prints no. What else can you get apart from greater than? Logical operators. A equals equals B, that's the equals. So 1 equals equals 1 is true, but 1 does not equal equal 2. That's, in other words, it's false. Uh, a um, tilde equals B. That means doesn't equal. 1 tilde equals 1 is false because 1 does equal 1. 1 tilde equals 2 is true because it's not equal to 2. A greater than B. That's greater than. 5 greater than 2. That's true. 1 greater than 2 is false. 1 greater than 1 is false. A less than B. Less than. 1 less than 3 is true, 3 less than 1, false, and 1 less than 1, false. A greater than or equal to B um, uses a greater than followed by an equal. 5 greater than equal 5, that's true. 5 greater than or equal to 3, true. And 5 greater than or equal to 6 is false. A less than equal B, less than or equals, 3 less than or equal to 6 is true, 3 less than or equal to 3 is true. A and B, and for and, both must be correct. So if you have parentheses 2 greater than 1, and parentheses 1 equals equals 1, um, those are both true, so the and is true. 2 greater than 3 in parentheses, and 1 equals equals 1 in parentheses is false, because 2 greater than 3 is false. And if one of them is false, the whole expression is false. A or B, either or, one or both must be true. So 2 greater than 1 in parentheses or 1 equals equals 2 in parentheses. So 1 equals equals 2 is false, but the 2 greater than 1 is true. And so the or expression, the whole thing is true. As long as one of them is true or both, it'll be true. Parentheses 2 greater than 4 or 1 equals equals 3 in parentheses. This is false, 2 greater than 4, and 1 equal to 3 is false, so the or expression is false. Not A, that means not true. So 1 equals equals 2 in parentheses is false, put not in front of it, and it makes it true. 1 equals equals 1 is true in parentheses, put a not in front of that, and that makes it false. That doesn't contain every possible operator, and you can combine operators like this. If not A and B, then print yay, end, which prints yay if A is false and B is true. Not A means A is not true, and B, just writing B means B is true. All right, logical and arithmetic operators work exactly the same. They both accept inputs and return a value which can be stored. Local A equals 5. Local is underscore equal, space equals space, parentheses A equals equals 5. So let's see. A is assigned 5. Is equal is, I guess if a equals equals 5 is true, so is equal would be assigned true. So if is equal is true, then print is equal, and it will end. So this will print is equal because this is a true statement. True. Programming is the action of taking a problem, such as sorting a list of items, and then turning it into steps that a computer can understand. Teaching you the logical process of programming is beyond the scope of this book. However, the following websites are quite useful for developing this. 
Code Academy is one of the best resource, resources for learning to code. It provides an interactive tutorial experience. Scratch. Scratch is a good resource when starting from absolute basics. Learning the problem solving techniques required to program. Scratch is designed to teach children how to program. It isn't a serious programming language. All right, local and global. Whether a variable is local or global determines where it can be written to or read to. A local variable is only accessible from where it is defined. Here are some examples. Accessible from within this script file. Um, that's a comment. Local 1, O-N-E, equals 1, the number. Function. My F-U-N-C, parentheses, parentheses. So comment, that's accessible from within this function. Local. 2, T-W-O, equals O-N-E plus O-N-E. So this is the variable one is assigned the number one. Local TWO is one the number one plus the number one here. If TWO equals equals ONE, then accessible from within this if statement local three T H R E E equals O-N-E plus T-W-O. Um, one, one and one is two. Two equals, two doesn't equal one though. Uh, <coughs> end and end. Whereas global variables can be accessed from anywhere in the script file and from any other mod. Oh, are these accessible only in this if statement and it assigns a different variable? Yeah, I don't exactly understand this. Accessible from within the script file, one equals one. Uh, my function, accessible from within this function, local two equals one plus one. If two equals equals one, Then accessible from within this if statement, local 3 equals 1 plus 2, and n. Whereas global vari variables can be accessed from anywhere in the script file and from any other mod, my, my underscore global underscore variable equals quote blah unquote. Function, O-N-E parentheses parentheses. My underscore global underscore variable equals quote T-H-R-E-E, -E, close quotes, end. Print, parentheses, my global underscore, my underscore global underscore variable, close quotes. So the output of that print will be the word blah, in quotes, from my global variable. One, parentheses, parentheses, print, my global variable. The output will be three. Okay, so this function, I guess, gets this global variable. So this one parentheses parentheses is necessary for that, it looks like. Local should be used as much as possible. Lua is global by default, unlike most other programming languages. Local variables must be identified as such. Function one, in parentheses, foo equals quote bar unquote end. Function two, parentheses, print, parentheses dump, parentheses foo. The output of that is bar. End. One parentheses and two uh, parentheses. Oh, does that get printed by this? One, two, one, foo equals bar. Dump foo, output bar. Dump is a function that can turn any variable into a string so the programmer can see what it is. The foo variable will be printed as bar. 
including the quotes which show it as a string. This is sloppy coding, and MindTest will in fact warn you about this. Warning. Assignment to undeclared global foo inside function at init.lua colon two. To correct this, use local function one parentheses local foo equals bar end function two parentheses print dump foo uh, output nil and, and then end. The output will be nil one parentheses, two parentheses. Nil means not initialized. The variable hasn't been assigned a value yet, doesn't exist, or has been uninitialized, i.e. set to nil. The same goes for functions. Functions are variables of a special type. You should make functions as local as much as possible, as other mods could have functions of the same name. Function to print dump foo. Oh, because two has nothing assigned to it here. Okay, local function foo parentheses bar return bar times two end. If you want your functions to be accessible from other scripts or mods, it is recommended that you add them all into a table with the same name as the mod. My mod equals open and close brackets function my mod dot foo parentheses bar close parentheses return that's indented return quote foo close quote double dot bar b a r end in another mod or script, mymod.foo, parentheses, quote, foobar, clo um, quote, foobar, close quotes, close parentheses. So that would be how you call it, I guess, in another mod. That's mymod.foo, and hmm, including other Lua scripts. You can include Lua scripts from your mod or another mod like this. Do file parentheses mindtest.get underscore mod path parentheses quote mod name close quote close parentheses double dot quote forward slash script dot lua close quotes close parentheses. Do file Let's see, you include Lua scripts from your mod or another mod by do file parentheses mindtest.getmodpath, the mod name, double dot quote uh, forward slash script dot lua, unquote. Okay, local quotes, local variables declared outside of any functions in a script file will be local to that script. You won't be able to access them from any other scripts. As for how you divide code up into files, it doesn't matter that much. The most important thing is that your code is easy to read and edit. You won't need to use it for smaller projects.